everybody. This is uh, Shop Talks. It's a project of the Ink Kitchen, which is an uh, online uh, resource for information about garments and all kinds of printing. And um, we're sponsored by the Impression Show, uh, who in their infinite wisdom is trying to make these shows more interesting, so you might want to come. And uh, this hopefully is part of it. We have a, a whole bunch of uh, speakers the rest of the day and tomorrow. And we're also sponsored by Haynes and Hirsch. And uh, so um, my buddy Kevin Sukahara is a longtime uh, person in the industry, everything from the uh, printing t-shirts by hand to digital machines. Alex is from a company called Ovaljet, uh, Dream Junction down in uh, Orange County, worked at Teespring and uh, also uh, experienced with a lot of, uh, especially the logistics of things. And Jacob Edwards is the owner of Jack Prints in Ohio, um, who does offset printing, uh, on demand, or just in time, get that right. And uh, so we're gonna talk a little bit about the future of garment decoration. Future of the future. A little uh, visionary future. kind of thing. And uh, so uh, let's start off with, uh, Maybe, what do you guys see around the show that's kind of the most advanced uh, thing? What's, what's, what's going on? Uh, the water-based seminar. Because <laughs> it was packed, so that's more important than the future right now. <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> How big would you so, say that crowd was? That was a big crowd. Police estimates 500. It's about 250 <laughs> people. Um, I'm just saying that's part of the future. It's, if no, if it's that true. many people are... I mean, water base was the first ink made, right? So we're going back. We're, we're so, um, actually, I'm not going to go right to the heart of what I think is going on. So we have more and more uh, fast printing methods, uh, but what's happening with order processing and workflow? That's the, do you guys see that at, like I do as maybe the next stumbling block? You know, as, as you try to speed up processes, there's always a, a barrier at some point. And it seems like, are we hitting that barrier already? Is like the, the production speed such that the order processing and the workflow, I, I, do you see those problems happening? Uh, yeah, I mean, um so, I mean, I typically look at everything from a print-on-demand standpoint right. um, because my entirety, my, the entirety of my experience in this industry has been through print-on-demand. Um, and if you believe that the trend is uh, moving towards shorter runs, uh, single-piece flow, uh, just-in-time delivery, uh, and things like that, I t try to look at technologies that support that workflow somehow, whether uh, they have solutions you know for part of that workflow or the printing technology set up in a way that supports single piece flow and variable data and on demand printing so actually uh, one of the coolest things that I saw and I've only this I, <laughs> I've only been here for a couple of hours but one of the coolest things that I've seen so far is uh, uh, an embroidery machine that dyes the thread on demand yeah, Whoa. did you see that? Yeah, I've seen that. It's awesome. Yeah, I yeah. saw the website, uh, and I, I today was the first time I saw it in person. Uh, the first, I saw a photo of it, and I'm just thinking, how does that possibly work? Um, and it works surprisingly well. So it was, you know, that's that's the type of things that I look at. Um, you know, if you if you try to launch um, an on-demand embroidery operation that offers minimum quantities of one, it's very difficult to do that. Um, because of the thread changeover? Because of the thread changeover, um, the fact that you can only use specific thread colors. So you have to map, you know, if you're trying to map a digital file to uh, groups of colors, it's, it's very difficult to do that. You know, it's a, it's a really good point to bring up that uh, with something like that and something like what we're seeing with a lot of on-demand is, is, uh, is, is, is flexibility. Minimizing those changeovers with the, the 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 dyed thread, the printed thread is is a great example of that, right? Not having to do that. Smed, smed. There you go. Yes. <laughs> What's that? Single minute exchange of dye. It's a 1916 German book. Really? About yeah. where all manufacturing came from. Every screen printer needs to read that. <laughs> Tell us more about that book, actually. So. <clears throat> So here's, uh, so if we just look at what happened 
in our industry. Commerce is solved, right? So a second, everybody could just sell something, and the most of them are nipple covers, right? So that's good <laughs> for us that are in this room. Known as t-shirts right? usually. <laughs> yeah, but it, yeah, there's so many t-shirts, I just need a new terminology that really works across the board. Because the reality is if we did not have to wear shirts, we would not. Absolutely would not. So my point being, if commerce was solved, then commerce actually is pushing us, right? So being out of stock, totally unacceptable. In the future, if I go to your brand and I order a small and you don't have a small, I'm never coming back. So that's where it starts is commerce, right? But commerce is solved. I can literally do commerce as well as Amazon or, or Target with a $39 account at Shopify. Literally, it works great. I, I, you can make every bell and whistle you want in commerce now. I can pick it, I can look at it, I can check out, I can pay for it. You can make payments easier, you can make clicking mouses easier, you can take the mouse away and you can use my eyeballs, whatever the hell you're gonna do. It just gets easier, but it's all just commerce, right? So the reality is for all of us is the agility of how to do this. So I think of it more as a stochastic problem. <laughs> how do you be random about being a manufacturer, right? And uh, so there's this need for many things, right? So you have the oval jet, you have this enterprise manufacturing of on demand, right? But you have the same challenges. You have uh, that, that you, we're, we solved it. No, because we still have utilization, expense, capacity, right? So most businesses that can sell 100 shirts today and 100 shirts tomorrow, week 48, they sell about 10,000, right? So all of a sudden it all breaks. And that's the problem is you have to be agile with your manufacturing. So really we gotta, we gotta look at all the manufacturing. So in my mind, it's more about actually spreading it all out. Embroidery, transfers, dye sublimation, screen printing, digital, every type of digital, because one might need to be shut off and one might need to be turned on. And really the thing that's not solved is, is actually the logistics engine <laughs> to make a decision. Because you come up with a graphic, and the Misfit shirt's really popular, or we, we game the whole system with pre-orders, which helps, right? So most businesses should definitely, that are doing commerce, should benefit from pre-orders and say, get uh, two or three days of sales under your belt, and then decide which machine it's going on or which partner you're gonna deal with. So there's, so there's a client out there creating a brand that has a thing that they just, oh my God, we're selling so much, it's solved. <laughs> And then what happens is they're all in the background talking to all of us, right? How the hell do I solve this? I now do millions of dollars a year and it's worse than ever. Yeah, how and do I scale? How do I scale? And by the way, I need cash, not cotton, right? Because if you look back, all the printers that were busy, Rick back in the heyday, I'm doing 50,000, went to a distribution center. Half of it's probably still sitting there. So it really didn't sell. It was waste. So the idea is also shrinking the waste and being more agile. So what we're seeing in our business is actually really quick change, SMED, single minute exchange of dyes, on and off. Ink slinging, 24, 48 pieces custom screen printed, 24, 48 pieces, 100 pieces digital, right? Just because of the make of the graphic. Because the graphic's controlling everything. I mean, I think we were just talking about this, about the hybrid process. I said, how many screens do you use to do hybrid? He said, two to three. I said, cool, my average number of screens in a year is three. I guess I don't need to do hybrid, right? So that, that's the thing, it's like, okay, I got one color here, I got two. So just aggregating that data is actually one of the biggest challenges for our industry. Because it's you, the next day, there could be an event that that client you're working with changes their need. And that's where it's all these kind of machines that seem like, why would you make that? Why would you make that little thing that does that little thing? That's actually a, a, a very useful product when you're, when you're trying to do that. And then the biggest part I could say, kind of, because I, I was in Boston and I had a little changeover and I love this. And I text Rick and I'm like, hey Rick, I got two hours. I'm in Boston Logan Airport. And he's like, come to this lobster shop. <laughs> And I'm like, sweet, I want a lobster roll. Well, I show up and he was there selling t-shirts. This wasn't <laughs> like he was inviting me to the lobster shop. <laughs> so the one thing I will say is all in all, 
be your customer's favorite printer and not your supplier's favorite printer. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you got to do. <laughs> Jacob, you just covered a lot of ground. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I completely agree with everything you just said. Um, <laughs> I agree that, you know, you have to start with the customer. And, uh, you know, I think, you know, Kevin knows that very, very well uh, in, in, in his day-to-day -day business. But that's the, um, that, that's the philosophy that we have to adhere to. And if you adhere to that principle, um, you know that the customer of today is very different than the customer um, you know, 20, 30 years ago because of trends on the e-com side, um, trends on the manufacturing side, things like make on demand, print on demand becoming more, vi vi uh, becoming more viable. So, I, and I think kind of what you're getting at is, um, you know, the printing or the printing or the making or the, you know, uh, stitching component of that process is just one part. So, you know, print on demand or make on demand um, is a, is is a trend in the industry, um, and most businesses are not set up to support that. So, there's uh, print on demand is not just printing on demand. It's, you know, ordering Street inventory. Too. <laughs> yeah, right, right. <laughs> we're talking. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. It's order communication. On exactly. Demand. <laughs> it's, it's ordering inventory on demand, picking it on demand, uh, bringing it to the decorating portion of your business on demand. Um, you know, how do all these materials get through a execution process or a manufacturing process uh, piece by piece, order by order? Um, if you looked at your your business and every single type of um, printing or making service that you offer in your business at a macro level, and you just said, how many orders do I get per day? And you had to produce all of those orders in the same day in the exact same order that you received them. It's another uh, FIFO, FIFO yeah. right? Yeah. Another manufacturing uh, acronym there, first in, first out. Um, how would you do that? And if you can't answer that question, or it's like unobtainium, um, you know, that's something that you should look at. And I think that there's uh, a ver very little discussion about kind of the ancillary pieces in that process um, on the inbound side, on the outbound side. Um, if we were at a e-commerce fulfillment technology convention, we wouldn't be having this conversation, right? Um, people would look at, you know, our you know, scannable picking system, and they'd say, "Yeah, great. Welcome to you know 1998 or whatever." <laughs> um, but 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 it's but the reality is it's, it's jitter. Get off the pot. <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's a very new concept um, for this industry. So I think you know, sort of uh, to to kind of dovetail on what you were talking about, I think there there needs to be a bigger focus on the material handling aspect. Um, it's it's not just how do we make the machine more efficient and to be able to print more things. It's really, you know, the whole end-to-end -end process of on-demand. Yeah. This, I'm gonna take one little piece of what you guys have been talking about <laughs> uh, because it's, it's really important. You've talked a lot about higher demand in one area means I've gotta be able to meet that demand upstream. All of my suppliers do. Integration is a huge piece of the future. But the future isn't just for the biggest players. The future is for every single startup. I'm going to, you know, setting up a screen printing shop. How do we get that as efficient as possible? How do we tie every piece of the process together? Um, has always been something that we all want to do. We all want to control these variables. You know, is, is the humidity messing up my screens? Or is it this new ink I got? What is that? So what did we do? We looked at, and SMED is a great example, how do I perform every function that needs to happen for a changeover while the machine is running, right? How do I, how do I keep it running so that when it's time to change over from one job to another, that time is as, as tiny as can be. So what did we do? We got our process as good as we could. We talked with some people about some special tools. We hit up Jacob, customized some cards for us. It was it was it was a Those little. Those were awesome, thing. by the way. Yes, yeah. <laughs> Made us these these cards that it was 
when I describe it, it's going to sound like a, another screen cart. Maybe it's got, it can, it can hold ink on top, but it was so much more. It <laughs> met our needs for... <laughs> My new sales guy. Yeah, for, <laughs> for the weight and for the integration to the end-to-end -end process. So now, when I've got someone running a, a screen press, and they print that last shirt, as the last one is coming off, we're taking out those screens, popping in new screens that already have the squeegee and the ink in them. Everything is ready to pin register instantly so that we're not down for more than a few minutes per screen. Um, so it's not just internet companies, it's not just uh, the, the biggest players, but everybody is gonna benefit and we're all, gonna, we're all learning this together. Yeah, I think Kevin brings up a really good point. <clears throat> when you look at even the digital era, there's, there's this a, appropriate use of digital, right? So you have some digital machines where if I only have 35 shirts to do today, it's cool. I'm going to go fixate them over here, whatever you're going to do over here. Maybe even fixate myself while I'm trying to do it. It's fine. <laughs> Once I wake up, I'll take the 35 shirts over and I'll run them. And it's perfectly fine because there was nothing else on the machine. But once you get into mass manufacturing and you got to go to scale, you're in a whole different world where you, you can't take a shirt and keep touching it <laughs> unless it's going to add value. So again, everything from your, your people at the end of a dryer sitting there holding the dryer up with their cell phone, you know, they're not adding value. You're like, no, but they count them. I'm like, really? My counts say they don't count any better than you guessing with a tape measure. <laughs> or do what you should, put a weighing machine at the end and <laughs> weigh one and there, there's the best count you're ever going to get. Um, so the point is, is there's, it's, it's, a, it's, it's, it's being appropriate with where you're putting the manufacturing. They bring up a lot about systems. That, that whole era of APIs and communication, that's true on demand. Like printing on demand, jetting shit was going on in the 80s, by the way. Like the Japanese have been jetting t-shirts forever. That's not new at all. Um, we didn't invent heads. That stuff was just taken off the other digital machine, by the way. But communicating the order without a human being in the way, that's what changed everything. And the second we had commerce say, hey, and I'm not even saying the best commerce guys out there have it solved, right? Because they really don't. They're, take, they're kind of crossing their arms and saying, sure, <laughs> we'll send you the graphic and the shirt it goes on. And, and that's, you know, so this is still very, a very immature process. There's not a lot solved with it. So, I mean, guys like Oval Gen stuff, they're having to reach so far up the stream where the eggs are laid to like go, okay, okay, we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna fix that too, right? <laughs> just like Corn Eat or anybody, they're, it's, the shirt's just one of the problems. They gotta reach so far up the chain. So, and screen printing was the same way. I, we, okay, I, I got all these screens I gotta do today. I gotta sequence them right. I gotta make sure the cart gets to the press with the right shirts and the right screens and the right inks and the right squeegees and even a printer that knows what the hell to do with it all. And, and, and it's a really expensive labor intense process. I think Rick and I have talked about this. Our, our shop, um, whatever, four or five years ago, uh, I, we were probably at 80% set up and tear down. And when you look at the color count to quantity of embellishment, hasn't changed much in 10 years. Still 80% of your time. So the best thing that we can do is actually have setters just setting pods of presses so that you're never stopping. That you just have to buy more equipment. You, that's the only way to solve it. And that's where the SMED thing came from. It's from CNC machinists. They would never buy one CNC machine, ever. They have two, minimum. <laughs> and there's a guy, and then they got the sign up that says, looking for senior machinist and looking for, because you need a guy that knows pressures and setup and there. But you don't want to take that same guy and then make him load the shirts. Because <laughs> now you just took all of the worth of your shop. And instead of him going to the next job, which by the way, will not be right, and will need something fixed about it, but when that happens on your dime, everything stops and there's no money being made. And that's, that's, that's not isolated to screen printing. That's embroidery, that's digital, that's everything. So in all the industries, we're still having to look back at traditional manufacturing and saying, how do they keep that line moving? You know, how did Rosie the Riveter actually do that? It's like, well, we kind of forgot that it's, it is a factory of, of manufacturing, so. So let me ask you a question. 
the scenario you're, you're, the picture you're painting, when, when we've got too much work, how perfectly everything needs to run, how, how tight We're all not the pieces enough. need to fit. You mean fit. Black Friday? Yeah. <laughs> I've heard. I've heard it's busy. <laughs> My question for you, though, right? I've heard about this yeah. thing. <laughs> Most businesses um, will get busy, but they're not always that busy. Right. How rapidly can we scale that down? Does this break when I run at half speed, when the volume isn't there? And kind of brings us to the other piece that you were talking about, and that is the data, the feedback from our customers. What do they want? And how well can we forecast, really? Not well at all. <laughs> Ever. <laughs> so that's why shops are just agility yeah. machines now. They're just, mm -hmm. can they, I, I still believe every shop should just have a manual in the corner too, just because you're also going to have to throw a guy over there. But those are starting to be harder and harder to find the guy that can go slap a couple screens in a manual, prove that it could probably work next time we get to it. And, and all that, right? Everybody should have one in their garage. Right. Yeah. It's like it's squeegee. To put drinks no. on, right? <laughs> yeah. But yeah, so the, the, the other idea behind a lot of um, the industry starting to focus on how they manufacture and utilization, utilization of time, right? Because you got all these machines. I, I think I said this the last time I sat here. The machine payment is never going to put you out of business. It never has put anybody out of business. It's always the eyeballs and mouths because they're the most expensive thing you possibly can do. And when you misutilize them, it's not going to work. You might as well get out while you had some money, right? So the idea is you got to, if you have a small shop where you do many different jobs, I mean, Rick, you have a couple little digital machines because Rick couldn't turn down his clients. Wait, he's going to kick a client away and then what? Next week they're sending 500 shirts to his competitor? Hell no. Can't do that, right? So to bring a, a, a smaller machine in that he could test something, it's not to mean Rick's not going to end up with an oval jet someday, but the point is so you got to start somewhere. But you're always kind of keeping track of how you utilize equipment. And the customer is definitely falling in love more with the product than the process these days, thank God. Like, I get less and less customers that are like, just do a four-color process because I don't want to pay for four screens. Because <laughs> that was like every day for us in the 90s and 2000s. Like, why isn't it just four-color process? It's like you're trying to explain to somebody why you're going to make it 11 colors and it's going to look great and you need to just be quiet. Well, if, if, if the customer just wants it to be available, right, on their website. I, I don't want to go there, pick a small in the red with that design and it's out. Then they also have to get over it and have the stomach for every process you can offer. And that's where a lot of times you're actually saying, no, this one doesn't even look bad. I mean, by the way, if digital came out before screen printing, I don't think screen printing would have happened. <laughs> that's my honest God truth. I think we would have made that shirt and went, wow, that looks great. And we would have never been like, man, I wish it felt like this. You, you know can what see I mean? That. You can see that in other industries, like the sign industry, right? I mean, hand-painted signs are really cool. Screen-printed signs, eventually when digital became so inexpensive, that's all you saw and people accepted it. Otherwise, yeah. they looked like shit, you know? Yeah, yeah and it's, it just looks different. It doesn't look bad. Right. It actually, in many cases, I think it's, and, and, and that term, it's not as high quality Quality is consistency. That's the word only means consistency in our industry. There's no such thing as quality because you could go buy a Supreme shirt right now for $65. We, one of you put two colors on an all style 1301. I mean, I, same ink. I'm sure Brian sold it to you. It uh, we, wasn't gold. We, we it, sold, didn't, we, it didn't we, cost we, any more money. <laughs> we printed uh, hundreds of thousands of prints that big on Supreme shirts. Yeah. But, uh, but I'm saying it's, it's it, so why is that higher quality? Well, the brand's a higher quality, but for us, we're the manufacturers. And it's the same reason why I think, you know, Walmart has their own brand and, t and Target has their own brand. It's literally the same supplier. I mean, it, it, you go to Salvania or whatever the light manufacturer, GE light manufacturer, and they got theirs being put in the GE box, and then they got the one put in the Walmart box. It's what it is. It's like, it's the same exact bulb. So at the same time, we're also, you know, we're, we're also in this thing where it's like digital transfer, even transfers. Come on, screen printed transfers are awesome. They're, that's a killer thing. Even the digital transfers that are coming out, I mean, it's really impressive. So, and there's definitely a time or place where I could prove the transfer was better than both of what we're doing right now. 
because at least we didn't go pick the shirt. And by the way, you got to have a lot of shirts to have them available, right? So I've actually ca- I've actually gone to like not calling them transfers because people think you know. The ones they used yeah. to see in the yeah. uh, Salvation Army that had Care Bears or Farrah oh, yeah. Fawcett, all, yeah. all the ink My favorite bombs. with the glitter so just, and puffy. I, so sometimes they say they're indirect prints. I like that. You know, because, <laughs> like that. because really, I think you made a point last year that I th- think that people don't care that much anymore. They just want what they saw on the screen, they want on the, on the shirt. And, it, and it's our job to figure out how to get it there, which yeah. is not an easy job. Yeah, but it's, but it's getting where we can... We can look at things and make a better decision based on the delta, right? Turnaround, graphic, con- how, what makes up the graphic, right? Does it, does it have glitter on it? Is it foil? What is it, right? And cost. And we yep. c- that's, the, that's the thing we're going to start solving with commerce when commerce comes to us. We're going to start saying, ding, 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 make yep. it this way, yep. right? So that's... Yeah, that, that's the that piece of quality is knowing <laughs> what the, the customers future? care about. <laughs> right. We did a lot of uh, experiments a few years ago on, on we did. what do the customers really care about and how do we know? Well, one way to know is they're willing to pay extra for it. What did you find out? Speed has been one of the biggest. Really? Yeah. Available. Is it available? Yeah. Do I go there? Is it available? Can I get right. it right now? And can I have it right now? Yep. Again, usually, usually I'm, I'm, I'm sitting in a meeting with somebody and they're looking and they're like, yeah, but we do screen printing only. We can't, we can't do this and da-da-da-da-da. And I'm like, I got that. And I grab the CFO and I'm like, you know, like 90% of the people in the world have no clue what the hell we're talking about right now. And the creator's like, no, oh, and he's freaking out. And it's like, I get it. I told because you're the creator. You're the guy that's like, it has to be done this way. And it breaks my heart. I pulled squeegees, right, when I was 16 years old. But the point is, it's like, this is just Spotify, DVD, VHS. We're just evolving up. But it's the same product. It's still someone's character, someone's drawing, someone's embellishment. It checks someone, the boxes. Yeah. Right. It's, it's still there. <laughs> Yeah, and I, th- I think there's, I think there's a lot of misconceptions on both sides of the fence too, within um, you know, kind of the analog techniques and the digital techniques. Uh, it's kind of this like problem of echo chambers, and you know, you have the digital echo chamber over here. Uh, I, I guess I'm part of that, and I'm trying, I'm trying to be more mindful Go about digital. it. <laughs> but you know, Go uh, digital. I, I don't have a background in screen printing or you know even digital graphics. My background's in e-commerce, supply chain, logistics, uh, fulfillment. And so <laughs> getting, getting into, uh, you know, when I, when I joined uh, Teespring and we had to go build a production facility and learn about, you know, screen printing and DTG, I was always so intimidated when Kevin would start talking about things like, you know, fiber mat down and, you know, screen tension and squeegee angle. And I'm thinking to myself, like, oh, my gosh, you know. We're going digital. We don't need to think yeah, about it. Yeah, you're like, I thought stuff. we were making like, t-shirts. We're, we're over here in the space <laughs> age over here. Like, you guys are in the stone age over here. And, uh, and you know, it's kind of like the, I think there's, there's a bit of, uh, there's a number of false narratives on the other side, too, that, you know, oh, uh, w- w- the qual- we'll never get that hand feel, or we'll never get that white opacity, or the color fastness, or the wash durability. Um, and evolution tells us that, you know, both sides are wrong. And I think that, um, you know, one of the things that, that, that we've realized kind of taking, um, uh, you know, that same sort of test, uh, testing philosophy and applying it to um, every aspect of the uh, technology is that you, you can uh, get similar results with the right process and the right technology. And we will eventually uh, factor in things like, um, uh, you know, subtle differences in hand feel, you know, matte versus gloss or, you know, having different types of fiber mat down that equate to different hand feels and things like that. That's just a process. Um, you can in- certainly incorporate that process with digital. And I think it's, it's thinking about what's the right process and who's already, you know, who's already doing this <laughs> and how do I incorporate it into my technology? And I think the same can be said for, um, you know, at the customer level, uh, when you're seeing these trends and you're seeing this 
you know, print on demand trend come and you're thinking about uh, this digital DTG POD world as some unobtainium thing, well really it's, it's there, there's a lot of things that from a textile manufacturing standpoint still apply. Um, and really all of the other print on demand concepts are really just kind of basic principles of e-commerce fulfillment. It's not some new, you know, we're not we're not inventing. JIT. Yeah, exa exactly. Exactly. <laughs> um, and so I think there's a big opportunity to, uh, you know, help educate the uh, the market as we kind of you know go through this transition from from analog to digital. Yeah, unfortunately, I don't think we got rid of enough of the problems going to digital <laughs> from screen printing. But all that said, agree. all that said, you still sit down with your client and you're like, yeah, but we can turn on the whole catalog from death row 1989 and they're like, do it. <laughs> yeah, right. That's the end of the conversation. Yeah. Because it's the only way you're going to ever do it. Right. Because you don't know if you're going to sell one of anything. And that's the only way. So these days, everything's enabled on demand. And then we start gaming it with every other service. You just, it's always got to be enabled for on demand up front because that's the only way, oh, we, we, two sold in a week none sold the next week. Damn, I'm glad we didn't do anything else about this. Well, that's right? kind of so. interesting, that story you told me about a, a client that you had. They had, what, like 30 plus designs, a, a, a music group, uh, and they had the license, and they did, what, 30 something things, right? And, oh, yeah. and, and like, it might have been a thousand. Three or, four, <laughs> three or four sold okay, and two sold like crazy, oh, yeah. and the rest didn't sell at all. And in the form of model, you would have had all this inventory, and you would have spent all your energy, how do I get rid of all this crap I made, Please. instead of all your energy on how do I make these two that sell like crazy sit on the shelf so I can send them out faster, right? And that, and that again, what, what Rick is saying, that's, that's where, you know, a lot of us as screen printers, I mean, Rick knows this, the, the 20,000 shirt order is here and there. It's a, actually, it's the worst thing for a print shop most of the time because then you got to scale up, get this big thing like you went Kobayashi for a day, try to jam a foot-long hot dog down your throat, and then the next day there's nothing to do. So honestly, just being a lot more agile about things and doing, you know, at most shops that I meet, even, you know, some of the guys Rick had, you know, you got 18 Golden Image Awards, he still has a couple digital machines sitting there, right? But even, you know, John from Linka, he, I'm talking to him, he's like, yeah, my average, my average print order is a three color, 144 shirt. I'm like, yep, it's everybody, right? So the quantities are going down, but the same amount of shirts are being bought. What we're doing is we're cutting the distribution centers out and there's not as much waste sitting on shelves because trends are happening too quick. Bum equipment shirt back in the day, maybe that was on the shelf for like two years. You could inventory them and everybody was getting it. Doesn't work that way. You get an Instagram post, you buy something, you never buy it again. <laughs> That's what happens. So it's so quick that it's less about... Unless it's a Patriot shirt. True, true. <laughs> but I mean, <laughs> okay, Just we'll kidding. offer down a new Just colorway and I'll make sure it's soft. <laughs> So the point is, even that, we're going to offer it on another colorway and make sure it's soft. Great. So now you need a portable design. You need a portable thing that you haven't decided yet. It's offered on seven colors. They're offered in six, six times seven, right? And we're also in two different shirts. One's going to be standard. One's going to be soft. Go. It, it seems like a, a lot of the parts of the industry, I think you talked about it earlier, are not ready for this, though, you know? Like, Correct. Like, like, for example, sports printing, you know? Why don't all the mills have the sports colors, oh, yeah. right? Good. It depends on what we mean by being ready, though. I mean, we, we talk about technologies as if one is inherently better than another, as if it's fun to pick sides. You know, I do it just for fun. I don't really follow football or anything, but <laughs> I like to argue. But the thing is, it's all no, the don't. execution. It's all. <laughs> You're right. I know. Sorry. No. You're talking to a professional <laughs> yes. arguer, by the way. I'm just <laughs> telling you how this works. Sorry, right. I watched too much Monty Python in my youth. Go ahead. <laughs> These are all tools. Digital screen. Whether we need something on demand, whether we need large batches, whether we need the lowest possible cost at a huge volume of identical products, right? That's really the customer kind of determines what the right answer is. And we should all be well versed in these. We should all know how to give the customers what's best for them, what they really want that's going to meet their needs. Part of that's not telling them what it is. <laughs> right? That can definitely it's, confuse the, t the hence, conversation. Hence, hence the uh, indirect print as opposed to a transfer. Well, and if you sell them too much, they're not coming back for like a year. So now you just lost your customer because you gave them too much. You know, I mean, it's a, the day old problem. 
Yeah, I mean, I still have 144 of them. It's just all the mediums are out of stock. Well, guess what? They're not even going to turn it on because they don't want the customer to go, and now they're paying to market, right? So now, the first time in their life, they're literally paying every time you click, and you don't have my size. <laughs> it's like a double-edged sword any way you try to cut it. So because commerce is there, you have to play by a whole new set of rules, and that's where cool couple days in, you could be printing 3,000 of the same thing you set up as one, but that's just, that's that's when you have something really good going on, but it goes away again. So you have it's, to be able to do this. It's kind of like, it's kind of like building a pipeline, right? Yes. You're ra Rather than going after a specific niche or, you know, building some business process for uh, one specific use case, you're building a pipeline. And that pipeline is, is designed to have digital orders flow through it. And rather than, you know, uh, putting all of your energy into, you put your energy into uh, make, improving the infrastructure of that pipeline, right? And so how does all of the, and, and by improving the infrastructure of the pipeline, we can increase the size of that pipeline, right? And, and the variable there is, is is the customer. And so if that pipeline is big enough and it's efficient enough and it's well, you know, if, if, it, if it functions the right way, um, then people are going to plug into it. Um, and I think one of the trends that we're going to see, uh, you, you just touched on it, I think if we looked at the average order size for the decorated apparel industry uh, and on a global level, year over year, it would be trending downward, right? Just like you said, the 20,000 piece jobs are, are, are no longer the, uh, they're, they're minority, right? So, um, and, and then if you look at, you know, the e-commerce side, they're not pulling back. You know, the print on demand e-commerce side of the business, they're not slowing down or uh, saying, wait, let's go back to, you know, longer runs um, because everybody's seeing that this is possible. And so I think if you, rather than, uh, sort of worrying about where it might go and, and how it's going to disrupt things and, and how it might affect you in a negative way, um, I think if you, can, if, if you can embrace these technologies and focus on building a pipeline, people, they will come. You know, if you build a good pipeline, they will come because, you know, uh, 90 plus percent of decorated apparel or, you know, 90 plus percent certainly of printed t-shirts is uh, manual, right? So that pendulum swing is, is going to happen, and there's going to be all this demand that needs to go somewhere. So um, I, you know, I believe that, that really if you focus on that pipeline, uh, y y you can fill it if, if you build the right one. Yeah, I also think uh, with, uh, again, commerce, right? I can go $39 a month, go make a sweet site. We've literally unlocked the potential for everybody to be Mark Echo. Literally. That's a great point. So if you think about it that way, it's not that the big orders are going away. We just let every small time crook in the world that was creative, which definitely was the dropout kid in the corner, like, yeah. Like you, you, know, you mean? Yeah, yeah, it's fun. <laughs> way funner, right? But my point is, they're hustlers and they hustle their brand. So when you're sitting with your customer, you're, you're better off trying to figure out how not to stuff their inventory up and come up with a solution with them that allows them to be agile so that when they're that, when they're that guy and they're sitting there and they're like, I got these 30 designs I did, and da, 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 you're like, okay, cool. Let's not, we also own a merchandising company, so we gotta sit on the other side of this, right? So we have 700 bands that we merchandise with probably 1,000 SKUs per band, right, active. So you're constantly telling the client, you know, he's like, ah, I really like the feel of this. I'm like, cool, do you wear all 700 shirts? <laughs> then shut up. Because that's not, that's not relative. Who is your buyer? Who is buying the shirts? Where are you selling them? Take the tour out. The tour we haven't solved until they're sitting there with the machine themselves, popping them out of the truck, which I think m &R did back in the day. Yeah. But cool idea, it'll get back there once these jetting heads don't shake around and fall out of a truck. Maybe we'll put them on a truck. But, so put the tour aside, but demand, it, it's everybody's like a micro band. Everybody's just making a brand. They're able to put it on a channel. I, I mean, Kit, you did not have that opportunity back in the day. I, I grew up skateboarding. I couldn't make a skate brand. What was I going to do? Ask my parents for $500 so I could make 100 shirts and then do what with them? 
right? Sell them out from under my bed. Now kids can literally sell internationally and they didn't even have to print one shirt. They can just plug into some web app. And then once they finally realize, yeah, I'm paying too high for that, now they're, now they're coming to us with, with like, yeah, you're going to do it for this. Because now, now they have 500,000 shirts a month, right? So it's like they become in demand, and we're running around having to solve it. And it's, it's not screen. It's not digital. It's not there. It, again, it's, it's looking at all of it and being flexible enough within a production shop that when you're bringing those customers in, that you can actually handle this properly and not build one thing for one company, right? You, it's, it, that's never gonna work. Flexibility. That's, yes. That's the only way to survive. That's it. It's, it's, it's back to the shoemaker. I'm just gonna go down the street. I did actually have that done. I did not know that was called a cobbler, by the way. <laughs> I had a pair of motocross boots, and I was like, these things were like 600 bucks, and they ruined the back. And I found a cobbler dude, and he fixed them, and he glued, I was amazed that there's still a cobbler in this world, right? But we're cobblers. So when you know how to screen print and you know how to put 18 colors on a t-shirt, you're also intrinsically much better at digital printing. I guarantee that. A thousand percent. <laughs> so there, there's definitely benefits of grabbing all the screen print kids in the world when you move towards the future and saying, no, no, bring that knowledge with you because the, a lot is similar, a lot. How it lays down, how it prints, the reproduction, how you handle the garments, all, all of that still is true in this. It's, you don't just get to hit buttons. I'm just telling you, it doesn't work that way. So. so back to your original question, what did we like at the show? Yeah. Kevin's glasses. Yes. Looking Thank good. You. Going back to this integration, going back to what can we offer our customers that they wanted before, picking up where you left off with that. It's things that, that lower the barrier to entry, that reduce the changeover cost. When it comes to digital, um, several companies here can now print a neck tag in the shirt at the same time that you're printing the front. That's a pretty big step. That's huge. There are. Doing it for a while, his own way. Yeah? <laughs> I haven't seen that at the show. Nope. <laughs> I should have shut my mouth. You're, you're at the wrong show. That's going on the editing floor. <laughs> at the gun show in Cleveland, they had it going. <laughs> nice. Um, let's but it's about giving our customers what they uh, want. John just so. walked away. He actually was the first one to cut it in 2012. Should we uh, have some questions, maybe? Anybody have any sure. questions? All right, so with uh, people ordering on demand or at low quantities, how do we get over the cost of handling that order? Great question. Yeah. Like, um, do you want to take that one? You have, you have that problem. I'm about to retire. That's my <laughs> solution. So. That, that, don't take that answer. Or it, it's not a bad answer, actually. Um, the way the way I like to think about this problem, and the way actually my wife just no you not. <laughs> well, actually, you know it was interesting. So I've seen it less here, but when I was at the Vespa show, which is the version of this in Europe, there were a lot more softwares that 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 handle the information, and uh, like you don't have to do as much, I would say, you know, uh, c communicates with your embroidery machines or your DTG machines and, uh, and less of the material that anybody has to look at. So, I mean, that's definitely part of it. Uh, and I, what I would say And is, you guys know it probably on a bigger scale. Yeah, well, and, and, and I think there's a misconception that your company has to be big scale to have automated... Uh, you know, automate uh, some automated workflow system. So the way I think about this problem and the way I describe it is if you had to print 10,000 different images on 10,000 different blanks uh, to 10,000 and then ship them to 10,000 different customers in 24 hours, how would you, how would you do that? And buy an oval jet. <laughs> well, well <laughs> Two of them. You think, you think about, <laughs> yeah. You, you, and, and, and primarily I'm talking about from, from an administrate, you know, from a material handling, from an administrator, how do you get the inventory in, how do you process the orders, how do you take the orders, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Well, the beauty about e-commerce is that everything is digital, including all of the data. And you're probably using a lot of pretty slick e-commerce systems in your business already, like QuickBooks or, uh, you know, uh, 
there are any number of basic inventory systems that are out there today for not a lot of money. Um, there are systems that you can put together you know, end to end from Shopify to QuickBooks to your inventory to your shipping for probably uh, a fairly nominal monthly cost, right? Um, there's, there's these systems that already integrate uh, that people are already using for e-commerce fulfillment. Um, and I think it's, you, you, you have to have a integrated system that can drive all of that activity. Uh, from an order taking standpoint, um, we use something called an API. And an API is just basically an open door that's designed to receive data in a specific format. So uh, the data that I get into QuickBooks matches this data, matches this data in my inventory. Um, you know, whatever printer I'm using understands that. And so it, it, it's a seemingly complex concept, but if you look, you know, I think if you, if you look at what systems are currently out there, um, you'd be surprised at how many uh, off-the-shelf systems already exist that are integratable. And really, it's, it's, uh, it's just the process of, of integrating an e-commerce fulfillment business, not a complicated one, a fairly simple one, um, with, a di with an on-demand digital printing business or even a screen printing business. I mean, we, right. we were doing things like uh, yeah, it's with the same. you There's and I single, were doing things at, at Teespring with yeah. uh, picking screens. You know, we treated screens as um, a Parts. skew that needed to be picked. And, you know, when we had a screen printing job of uh, 30, 30 units and three screens, our system counted 33 things that needed to be collected. And then it drove people with an iPhone through, you know, a, a, a group of, uh, through the inventory and then the screens and help move it through the process. And I think also some of these problems will be solved by our vendors. You know, you know, there will be increasingly, if you're a screen printer, software that when you place your order will also order your shirt from one of the distributors. Those oh, are absolutely. integrated. Yeah. It's happening now. It's not very, yeah. I don't think any of them are very good, but, but, but they're, they're working on it. It's going to get better. The distributors of our shirts are going to get better. The software that we use. To, to Maybe they'll finally barcode them. <laughs> yeah. Or RFID. Something. You hear me? Peril makers, <laughs> put something on it unique. <laughs> but when you're... I mean, already, I mean... In, Serious. You know, in my lifetime, they went from, you know, you had to order cases to get a discount and pay through the nose to get it delivered to you. Now you get free shipping from your distributors, and you can order one piece. He had to hand cut the film. So they, they've solved a bunch of those problems for us. <laughs> Seriously, I don't know why I didn't retire then. I'd have been like, I'm hand cutting film, I'm out. <laughs> so there's a, there's a delta between your point and Alex's point of the total API integration where we're using phones to. We use email. Yes. And it's a PNG, which is easier than any screen print thing. So my question is if you mm -hmm. already own a screen printing shop, if you add a digital machine, it's literally a joke compared to the work you have to do with the screen print job, period. So with zero system, I can just take a PNG and be like, knock the background out, print. Right? I mean, it, so it, there is a huge benefit. I, we actually did a test with our factory, and they were doing like a multicolor simulated process thing, and I think the average time was 35 minutes to set this thing. The average time on digital was less than four minutes. And that was hand separating the digital file. Yeah, because so. e even using a desktop PC is still a digital system. Oh, yeah. Right? Yeah. You know? Yeah. yeah. I mean, Does that answer your question? make a workflow out of Google Docs. The question is, even if you have a pretty slick system, you're going to pay a dollar to process right. that order. Where does that dollar come from? Well, he's saying when you don't have your website well, taking it in, time. building the order. Yeah, yeah. So the question is, yeah. if uh, it costs all this money to administrate, to process the order in a contract situation, that um, if it costs a couple of dollars and you can only charge $3, I think that's a pretty clear answer. Don't do it. <laughs> well, yeah, well, well, so I mean, so there's a blended approach to that. So the very first, so I remember when Rick and I were looking at the very first, you know, it's like the second 
version of the Corneat after the 932 is like the Avalanche, the first one. And I remember him and I sitting there, and we were having the guy run like this crazy red devil over a zipper. We duped him into a, a total hailstorm, ended up hitting the head, ended up screwing the whole machine up, and in it, some, of his, some language he was MF and everybody, right? But the point was, someone said, yeah, but it'll only do 50 shirts an hour. And Rick and I both look at each other and start laughing, and we go, why, how many do you make? And they're like, I can print 500 shirts an hour. And I'm like, I'm saying, how many do you get off your dock? How many shirts ship a day? Because Rick and I are looking at it and going, yeah, no, the average is like 100 an hour if you're lucky. If you're like one of the best printers in the world, you're putting 100 shirts off your dock an hour. So one is, we, when we first got into digital, we actually sold it as prototypes. We never used the term finished good. We sold them as high-end prototypes. And we would go to Magic Marketplace in Vegas, and we would hang entire shows. Actually, the very first corny thing that was here, if you looked at it with Tupac and all that stuff, it was all done by Jack Prince because we hand separated every one of them, we made them look beautiful, they weren't just jammed in PNGs, they looked amazing, right? And, and, and the very first digital machine ever offered, you could also make look amazing if you took the time out. So I think what Pierre is trying to say is yes, there is a gap between trying to build a business out of that small processing, you, could, you couldn't finance that. But what you can do is you can use it for positioning, for size, don't use it for color. But a lot of times in our business, 90% of returns are not because of quality. They're actually because of some logistical mess up. It, it was, it's the wrong size. It looked right on the screen, it looked right on the mock-up. Unless you're sending someone six mock-ups on the exact shirt, they don't know what it looks like anyways. So half the time they're like, no, it's too low, it's too high, I don't like what it looks like. That's where just taking a quick machine, throwing a PNG in it, ramming it out and saying, hey, kind of close and then getting their opinion. They might even say, no, I don't even like that design. You're like, well, thank God we didn't make 3,000 of them, right? So there's also a lot of get out of jail free cards with having machinery like that in your shop. I, I think there's a gap where if you start having stacks of shirts, and I mean, I would say there is a conversation to batch every file you're going to make digital and then just write some crappy little Photoshop thing that does it or put it in one of their systems. But you definitely don't want to sit down, do that, get a cup of coffee, do one graphic, go fixate a shirt, then go over, print a shirt, go back, fill your coffee again, put the creamer in, then go back. You definitely want to do some aggregating. Because <laughs> well, in big scale, that's all the fair. real enterprise businesses are doing. They're doing mass aggregation of file processing while we're all literally sleeping. Yeah, that's and, what's and happening. There's something called you know, RIP software. Um, that processes files automatically for, for digital output. And there's the same, con you know, in a digital on-demand uh, configuration, you're with, with an API that can bring in orders automatically. Now you've eliminated order desk. There's no need to take orders manually at that point. Um, then you have a RIP process that utilizes color profiles for different garments that handles your output part of it, right? So you still have to put resources into color profiling, understanding what your settings and your configuration is going to be for the output, but you're not putting resources on a job-by-job -job basis into, well, how do I need to modify this image or what, what does it need to be for this garment? You know, because they're using an approved garment that's already in your database, that already has a configuration applied to it. So when that data comes in, it's just going to process, you know, through a directed uh, workflow, essentially. But so that's that's an interesting. Let me say what he said. So his, his yeah. comment is that that works for a big company. It doesn't work for a small one. Right. I want to take a different approach. I think the lobster question. shop comes back up. It's actually good <laughs> that you spend the time with your customer, because if they're just going to bring you one shirt every time, which every one of us has that friend, right? I got this great idea. That guy. But it's the admin cost is what he's really yes. asking about. Yeah. It's it's not printing the job. It's processing the order. Right. So make it thirty bucks. Make make it that's make one it, approach. Make it hurt so they don't keep coming back. <laughs> that's one approach. The other though is looking at this and saying, of my, let's say three dollars of margin, I just took a two dollar bite out of that by by having somebody go through these manual processes because that's how my business is set up to run. You can take those and those three, five, ten jobs a day, 
as long as you're not losing money, you can consider that an investment towards your future. You can start looking for the low-hanging fruit, figuring out what to automate, what to integrate, and nobody does this really overnight, or they don't do it effectively overnight. It's taking it one that. piece didn't at you, a time. Can you try that? <laughs> I still try that. Cincinnati, Ohio. By the way, oh, wow. none of what we're talking about is actually solved. So yes, this is ad hoc. It's not will perfect be for another, anywhere. Yeah. It's, and consider it an investment if that's something you think would pay off. Because you're, you're building a new kind of pipeline for your business. We've all been there. Think of uh, uh, if you started as a manual shop, there was a time where you had to make that decision on, do I get an auto? That's a lot of money. That's more than I've ever spent on equipment. It's got to turn. Right. But the orders are there, right? That you, you bring in different customers than you did before. And that's, that's really the analogy I'd like to, to focus and, on. And I think also components of that. Well, I mean, so uh, I would say that there's inventory management solutions, uh, in a, you know, integration solutions from e-commerce to inventory to shipping that are off the shelf that are very reasonable for really any size business. All, all of that, ex all off the shelf products exist for that today. Uh, what doesn't exist is this cohesive, you know, end to end uh, automated workflow system for the print on demand industry or components of it like, hey, I don't want to have to hire a software engineer to go build an API. Hopefully people in this room are listening because it'd be a great idea to have a, you know, open source API for the decorated apparel world. And you know, then you could utilize that. So I think other, there's going to be components of the chain that become um, less expensive or uh, less difficult. To, you, know, you won't have to build those. You, you could sort of piece it together. Um, all the way to, I think there's going to be total end-to-end -end solutions that will incorporate um, you know, the printing technology as well. I mean, pretty much when I sit here and I see somebody ask a question like that and everybody nods their head yes, someone will sell to those people. So somebody's going to try to solve that because there's well, like enough the key, customers I, for it. Yeah, and I mean, what Rick was alluding to earlier, and this isn't a new concept, it's definitely an old concept that I think is going to come back in a really cool way because we've actually solved a lot of the original problems with it, but the concept of kiosk. Like just the concept of kiosk based, uh, you know, where, you, cool, I walk into even my local print shop or some of the bigger brands are even putting up physical locations again. It's like, yep, you walk in there, you can drive. I mean, I, I used to make the joke, I don't understand why we're even making the sites mobile. I can't put a 300 DPI file on a phone. Well, now you can. I can just go to my Google Drive and literally upload it and make a shirt online. So all of that has, like it has ramped it over to, to the point where even the phone you have in your hand, if you're like, don't have shaky hands like me, you could almost take a file that would print at 15 inches tall and it would look fine digitally, <laughs> probably. But your but focus saying, is on the self-serve aspect for the yes. customer. Oh yeah. yeah. Yeah, but I mean, we also have offset printing and y'all still don't make your business cards at home. So my point is there, there's also that. So there's definitely room for us to be professionals and offer service back, even though everybody thinks because there's this little printer that you can make t-shirts on that I guess we should just give up. What, what you got to realize is there's so many more demand than there is even good printers. That's the crazy part. There, there really is so much demand because the second all these things turned on and we cut the distribution centers out, there's no time gap. It's just demand from buyers straight to manufacturing. There's exactly. nothing in between anymore. So now we're having to, we're actually, the thing we're going through as an industry is we're dealing with the exact demand that was there. Before we used to like, okay, we sell winter and fall and we book these orders and then Rick gets some and I get some and Kevin gets some and then we print them. And you got cut off. <laughs> Excessive <laughs> vocal cord usage. <laughs> Check one, two. <laughs> Dead battery. Oh, well, well, thank you. All right, we got to. Um, and then the mic dies. I, I think we could probably talk all day. I don't know if everyone would listen all day. I think we already did. <laughs> but uh, yeah, we did. but um, 
if you want to continue the conversation, I, I, don't, I don't know about uh, Kevin and Alex. Jacob and I will be here at 4 o'clock, and there will be beer that's free. How's Woo-hoo! that? That's the future of garment uh, we should open a discussions. <laughs> um, so uh, we'll be around if anyone else wants to talk to us. And uh, I want to thank uh, Kevin and Alex and Jacob. And uh, thanks for coming. Thank there's you, Rick. More, yeah, uh, thanks for everybody more, um, more talks. Uh, I think there's one about transfers that should be pretty interesting next, actually, or indirect printing, as I like to call it. And uh, tomorrow there's a few good ones. And then if you get scanned by the lovely Liz here, uh, we'll let you know when this is up uh, online, uh, the video. Check out the inkkitchen.com. All right. Oh, yeah. Thanks Thank you for all. Coming. Thanks, Rick. Appreciate it. <laughs>